I have kind of an interesting habit. Well, it's less of a habit, more of a financial problem. As a general rule, I don't read manga. Now, why is this a financial issue? Well, like anime, I tried to stay on the right side of this very almost invisible gray line as far as legality is concerned. To me, manga has to follow the same sort of uh, moral rules, at least as far as me consuming the media. But unlike anime, which I can actually stream from multiple sources or buy on DVD fairly cheaply in some cases, all I have for manga is to buy it. And when it is 10 to $15 for a volume that I can devour in about 20-ish minutes, depending on the volume, I kind of don't feel like I'm actually getting good value for my money. So oddly enough, this will be one of the few times that I'm actually reviewing an anime for which I have read the manga. Like, this rarely happens to me. This just happens to be one of the few manga that I actually follow. There are others, but they're very small in number. So, like, Helsing before it ended, Azumanga before it ended, and Yotsuba, which is still ongoing. Because who doesn't follow Yotsuba? No one. That's who. No one. Now that said, I do have to somewhat keep up my integrity as someone who reviews anime without actually having seen the original content from which it is based. I don't want to judge an anime based on how closely or not it followed its original material. I just don't want to do that. That's a subject that I think is pointless. If I wanted to go and see the original material, I would just reread the original material, not watch an adaptation. So, ladies, gentlemen, and others, my name is Arkada, and welcome to Glass Reflection. Today, the disappearance of Nagato Yuki-chan, a spin-off anime produced by Studio State Light, is set in an alternate universe of the Haruhi Suzumiya franchise, a universe where time travelers, aliens, and espers do not exist. But romantic comedies sure as hell do. Let's jam. So let me start this off very clearly, so we're all understood. This series is not Harihi. As much as some of us would love a continuation of the story from the Disappearance film and just more Harihi in general, this is not it. So if you go into it hoping for that, you're going to be disappointed. Sorry. What it is, is a rather pleasant side story asking the question, what if? What if Harihi was not a god? What if the world was not changed? by her every whim. What if everything was completely and totally normal? Well, actually, there wouldn't be that much of a change on the surfaces. In actual Haruhi canon, the Brigade members do try to keep all the supernatural things under wraps, at least from Haruhi. But this series just removes the supernatural elements altogether, and for the vast majority of characters, nothing much has changed. If you are a fan of the existing Haruhi, then you might be able to place the alternate world that the show occurs within. The hint is in the title, The Disappearance of Nagato Yuki-chan. You remember that alternate world without Haruhi that Kian is sent to in The Disappearance of Haruhi? No? Well, obviously you haven't watched it yet and should remedy that ASAP. And I'm not joking either, Disappearance is an amazing film, go watch it. Anyway, that alternate world, the one where Haruhi is and has always been powerless, is more or less where this show takes place, just with no connections to existing continuity, like no random Kion suddenly appearing and wondering what the hell's going on. The story is not a sequel, nor is it a prequel. It's a fairly normal story that shows us what happens in this alternate what-if world. To be more technical, it's not a sci-fi drama, but more of a slice-of-life rom-com. There isn't so much of an ongoing plot with this series, not that the old Haruhi had much of one either. Just to keep things interesting, however, a rather large focus is placed on the romance plotline between Yuki and Kion. In the original series, there was never really a solid romantic plotline between any of the characters. The closest one we had was that between Kion and Overlord Haruhi herself, but honestly, that one never really went anywhere. The series almost plays itself out like a fan fiction, considering from the get-go it places Kion and Yuki in this romantic context and refuses to give nary a hint of a love triangle with any of the other main female characters. Except the show's not really fan fiction because it was actually written by the same author as the original, which at times feels weird considering the change of tone. Said tone is just, well, traditional slice of life fluff. You either like it or you don't. The show takes a little while to get going, to be honest, as it really tried to solidify the differences between it and the original article. Only to have the character of Haruhi actually show up in this show, in universe, and basically just hijack it for a couple of episodes. 
Speaking of, as far as our cast of characters is concerned, Hari is still as overexcited, random, and manipulative as always. Itsuki is, for lack of a better description, her loyal subject. Asakura is the motherly protector of all, the A student, and Kion is... Well, he's still Kion. Not much has changed with any of them. In fact, Yuki seems to be the only character that has changed as far as her personality goes. Like, original Yuki being the computer-like alien character was a bookworm and a silent secondary character who rarely spoke up, only to do so when absolutely necessary. And out of all the brigade members was the one you quite honestly did not want to screw with. This new Yuki is vastly different. She's not much of a bookworm, instead preferring to play portable video games, but she's quite a bit more emotional, if a little shy. Where the old Yuki would have a constant deadpan expression, Disappearance Yuki is an altogether different person. This makes for an interesting plot point later on, actually. So that's the gist of the story, for the most part. Take the characters we already know and throw them gently into some rather stereotypical slice-of-life situations with a bit of a romantic plotline sprinkled on top. It's nothing revolutionary, but what it is, is an excuse to be able to spend some more time with these characters. These characters that we know oh so well, that we have waited so long to spend more time with. The animation is actually quite different than what we're used to, and it's not actually something that I expected. Sure, it's being made by a different production house, State Light instead of Kyoto Annie, but I've seen shows swap houses before and still keep the same general look. Spice and Wolf, for example. Hell, even Full Metal Panic, when animated by Kyoto Annie, looks similar to how Gonzo did it back in Season 1. Here, though, they went with entirely new character designs based on the existing character models. They are still recognizably the same characters, just drawn differently. The tone of the animation has shifted as well, opting for much lighter colors and tones to match with the now light-hearted setting and story. The animation itself is rather average, but that's to be expected considering the content, and it's only when the story really gets interesting in the latter half of the series that the animation gets the chance to stretch its legs. Even then though, Kyoto Annie, they are not. Hell, just look at Kion. Out of all the characters, he shows the most drastic change, now looking more like a suitable love interest for a show like this. Thankfully, his personality isn't all that different, and we eventually get to see the resident king of Snark make his triumphant return even if it takes a few knocks to the head from Harahi to do it, but it's still something worth mentioning. Now allow me to take this moment to do some inner crying over the fact that Funimation actually was able to get the original cast back. It was a really big worry that I had, for me going so far as to even make a crazed vlog going over the chances of will they or won't they get the cast back. Because I love this cast, I really do. But it was never a sure thing, because you have things like state laws and the Screen Actors Guild posing potential threats to this wonderful reunion. But thankfully everything got sorted and the entirety of the original cast comes back to revoice their characters. Now I'm not going to talk about the quality of the dub because I've done that before. Twice, actually, and nothing much has changed. There was a bit of a rough start, the first episode was kind of... Eh, and not as good as I was expecting, but they did get better over time, and it's kind of forgivable considering how long it's been, to be honest. So bottom line with the show is that you have to ask yourself, what are you expecting? If you've never watched Haruhi before, this is a horrible place to start. Sure, you can enjoy it as just this cute slice of life series, but there is so much in it about the characters that you just won't get. Because the show's not going to bother retreading over something that it assumes you already know. Now, if you have watched Harahi before, then your enjoyment of this series will be dependent mostly on why you liked Harahi. If you were in it for the sci-fi wacky adventures, well, they don't really exist here. Then again, that's not even necessarily true. There is one plot line, just one, that feels like it belongs in the original franchise. And boy, is it a good one. Now, if you watched and enjoyed Harahi, for the characters, then you'll probably have loads of fun with this show. Even if you were just casually interested in this new version, there are enough throwbacks to the original that make watching this one worthwhile. That's if you're paying attention for the throwbacks, because they're not necessarily very obvious a lot of the time, but when you do notice them, you're just like, ah, I see what you did there. Sure, it's no Harahi season three, but for me, it was enough, at least for now. It's like a, a snack, as it were, before we finally get to the main course that is season three. And I hope that that actually happens. Come on, Kyoto Annie. You know it. You know you want to do it. And we would love you. 
so much. So, so much. Please. Please. Please! And so, with all that in mind, I present the disappearance of Nagato Yuki-chan with the recommendation to buy it. It's not required viewing like the other Harihi shows might be, but it's still worth your money. But it's still worth your money if you're interested in it. However, if you want to try it out, then Funimation has the show streaming in both sub and dub on their website. If you happen to have access to it, the sub is completely free at this point, with the dub locked behind their subscriber paywall, which is to be expected. I can only assume that a home video release will be forthcoming. At least, I, I hope it will be, anyway. For alternate anime recommendations, well, I'm gonna be honest, this one's rather difficult, as this particular kind of show, and by that I mean a spin-off slice of life, is a rarity and isn't always pulled off that well. So the best I can do is recommend shows with the same general feeling. Aria the Animation is one, though it's not quite what you'd expect from it. And secondly... Uh, let's try Kinido Mosaic. Like, I realize I just kind of picked two shows out at somewhat random, but they each have similarities to this show, and I think that either would work out great for you. So between the two, hopefully you should find something to your liking. And that's it for me. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the video, follow me on Twitter if you feel so inclined, and hey, if you like what I do here and feel like helping out, please consider going and checking out my Patreon page, and if you feel it within your heart, also consider donating. Very special thanks to Grace Anderson, Joshua Garcia, Nikolai Gray, Walter Kelly, Jack the Nekumimitaku, and Kirito3601030 for donating already. You guys are amazing, and I am so glad that I'm able to actually spell out all those names without screwing up a take. Though it took me a while, but, you know, it's worth it, because you guys are awesome. So until next time, ladies, gentlemen, and others, stay frosty. Thank <laughs> you.